Let's now start to think about, um, we took a long detour, uh, but let's talk to think about uh, elastic strain energy of edge dislocation dipoles. So let's say that we have two edge dislocations with a Berger's vector B1 and B2. Um, they have opposite polarity. They're separated by some distance D. Um, we should expect that Berger's vectors of opposite polarity or, you know, should basically attract because they want to fill the extra half plane. If we have the same polarity of defects, then they should want to um, basically, they want to repel each other because that's too much compression uh, together. So we can actually calculate the force um, between essentially these two defects to prove that they will want to either attract or they will want to repel. So we can calculate our PK force of one edge dislocation stress field on another. So again, let's consider, and we can build out and we can calculate. Um, so for example, let's do B2. We're gonna say that Berger's vector is one, zero, zero. So let's do the first case where we are actually having them of the same polarity. So B2 is one, zero, zero. T2 is zero, zero, one. We can see here. And now I can calculate, or I could you know, effectively calculate, um, Let's see here, Let's. I'm trying to remember. We need the edge stress field. So we'd have to calculate that. So let's go back and see what we named it. We knew it was screw stress, but I think that we named edge, possibly just edge, because we're looking at the effect of the stress field of inherently of the edge dislocation, the effect of that on our second edge dislocation. Yep, it is edge. Um, but I wanna make sure, uh, let's, we, let, let's clear some variables here. Let's get, because I just want to keep it generic to begin with. So let's clear G, let's clear new, let's make sure to clear B. And then let's go ahead. Oh, oops, I made a mistake. Ah, yeah, let's, let's name it edge stress, but I need to clear again uh, and put those separately. My apologies for that one, but let's go here, clear. Let's go ahead, let's separate these. Clear B, clear G, clear new. Now we're good to go. Okay, so we've got our nice generic edge stress tensor. So now we can calculate the PK force. So we're gonna take edge stress dot, again, we're gonna see the effect on the B2. And then now we are going to uh, now we're going to go ahead and cross that with T2. So we see we have, and actually we could go ahead and do full simplify on this. So we could full simplify this expression here. Almost here we go. Let's take, uh, just look at a matrix form. So we have two components: one in the x direction, one in the y direction. None in the z in the you know z direction, which is good because we know that they should be acting the opposite right here. So if we're looking for the glide and the movement specifically, we're going to look at it in the x direction. We can see that now here. Now, in this expression, we know that x is equal to zero. Uh, or actually, x is going to be some function of distance. Y is going to be equal to zero. Excuse me. Um, so yeah, let's, let's do, we can look at that here. Let's now replace, yeah, let's just look at the edge, the, the X direction, because that's where we want to see where we can glide. Let's go ahead and set Y to zero, as we tried to do previously. Excellent. And we can also set X to a distance. Um, let's try to avoid D because we already had D somewhere else <laughs> um, in there. So let's set X to some distance, dist, or you know, let's, let's just name it something. Here we go, just dist, just like that. So we see, so once we plug in this distance here and we can see that the force, um, and you could just put a magnitude that Berger's vector, you see that the force scales with Berger's vector squared and G, but we see that if the Berger's vectors are in the, the same direction, i.e. they have the same polarity, the force is positive, that means that they repel. If we were to flip the Berger's vectors, the force would be negative, hence attraction. So remember, we can kind of see those. And actually you could calculate that edge 
um, you can actually calculate the energy here as well using some of the same you know techniques. Again, you could integrate that, figure out what that energy is. Um, and then we can actually show you, and next time we'll get into dislocation motion, but we want to show you the opposite scenario as well. So if I were to change the direction of that Burgers vector, you'll see now that our force is negative. So if the force is negative, they'll attract. Makes sense from what we've discussed previously. Um, and you can see essentially uh, that force decays as a function of distance as well. So now onto dislocation motion.